Okay. Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, 3-in-1 tree guard paint, and today we're going to be planting an avocado tree. Um, to save some time, I just prepared the hole um, here in Southern California where clay is um, predominantly, you know, the soil down here. Um, but it's actually good to actually have clay soil as um, I've also gardened in Florida for many years. Um, clay actually retains the minerals, the moisture, um, it actually benefits the trees and it's the reason California is kind of the fruit belt of the world is because of our clay soil. So um, if you've got clay, um, you should be fortunate and we're going to improve it today with um, adding some compost and this is a bag of um, compost that I picked up from the local garden center. You can make it at home as well, um, but I'm just going to put some soil here in the hole. I'm going to keep some for the top part of it. I've already prepared the hole. I'm going to mix some of the compost with the natives clay soil that's below so that the roots can adapt between the two. I don't want it to go straight into just the compost alone. Um, and now I'm going to take my tree here. Actually, I'm going to take one more scoop of this out. So I want to take some of the native soil, as you can see, that I've now mixed with the compost. And that's going to be part of the soil that's going to wrap around the tree. Mix some of this back in here. So we've got enough dirt. We've got to be careful that when we plant it, that we don't plant it too deep. You're going to want to make sure that the roots are at the same level as the container. Um, so we're going to make sure that once it's in the ground, the soil level that's in the pot, it should be at the same level that's going to be in the ground. Um, and as you can see here, um, unfortunately this tree was sunburnt. And this is at the nursery. It hasn't even been planted yet and it's already getting burnt. You can see all these brown spots here. Um, and it's going all the way up the trunk. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use a product such as this, um, Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. This one here is in white, but the homeowner decided we're going to do brown, which is another popular color for doing something that's more natural looking for the tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to take off this metal stake, which could be contributing to the sunburn on the tree. The stake gets um, overheated in the summer and it's right against the bark and actually that's right where most of the damage is happening. So we're going to take off the stake. You want to take off these tight bandages as well that's on here. And we're going to pull the metal stake out. And we're going to restake it with a wooden stake. Or I've got this metal stake, which is coated in plastic as well. It's a safer alternative that won't overheat on those hot summer days. And now we're going to pull this tree out. Here's the roots. You can see that they've wrapped around the container. Um, near the bottom, I always like checking to see if there's any um, coiling of the roots, it's seeing that if it's pot bound, root bound, we're just going to open that and basically wake the plant up and say you're no longer in a pot, you're not going to be in the ground. It should start growing. So we're going to stick that in the ground here. I'm going to set that down and you can see we're right near ground level. I can even see the seed of um, the original avocado seed that was then grafted to the variety, which is a Haas avocado variety that's grafted right here onto the original um, rootstock over here. And take a look at all that sunburn. It's toasted. Um, but we're gonna try to save this plant. We're gonna give it a chance here and see what Ivory Organics can do to give this um, tree another shot at life. So now we're gonna backfill the soil. It's mixed with compost as well. We're then going to take um, an organic fertilizer as well. Uh, there's a lot of micro and macro organisms that are living in the soil. The micro uh, um, organisms are the nematodes and the bacteria and the fungus that are living in the soil. But we also want to feed the worms and the roly polies and the slugs that will all consume these organic fertilizers. And this here is basically a Job's Organic Fruit and Citrus um, Tree Care. It's got 355, which is 3% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus, 5% potassium. Um, and it's got a lot of other micronutrients in there, which will help give this tree a fresh start. Um, but again, the most important part is we're doing this organically. We're feeding the soil organisms, something that a chemical fertilizer will not do for you. Um, so avoid you know, using other products that are not organic. And now we're just gonna mix that into the soil and backfill that in. We're gonna take a little more compost. What's left? 
dump that around the tree. We'll continue to backfill that around the tree. Make a nice little ring to contain the water and crushing any larger clay blocks. Making that ring. And now the next step is I'm actually gonna pat. I'm not stepping too hard, but I'm trying to get rid of any air pockets that may be around it between the soil and the, the roots to basically make sure that the roots don't dry out. Um, to make sure the roots don't dry out in any air pockets that might be underneath ground level. And then we're gonna water it. I'm gonna add one more thing to the water as well. I've got here a fish fertilizer. It says 511, five for nitrogen, one for phosphorus, one for potassium. Um, and we're gonna shake it. This here is gonna also help the plant off to a good start. So I put some of that in there. And we're gonna add one more product that I like using as well. And it's a Super Thrive product. It's got vitamin B1 in there to help with transplant shock. So we're gonna put a couple drops of that in there as well. It doesn't take much, it goes a long way. And I only use it right at the beginning. And we're gonna soak it. This is probably the first two gallon watering that I'm gonna do, but I'll probably add another two to four more gallons today and start watering every other day. We're right in the middle of spring right now here in Southern California. So we're gonna water it about every other day for the first couple of weeks and then once or twice a week thereafter um, in the fall and winter just basically watch the forecast see if the plant needs it um, but once a week waterings make sure you water deep um, the goal is to basically water is to make sure the water gets down uh, several feet so this here's our first watering and like i said i'm going to add another two to four gallons throughout the day today being its first day and the last step we're gonna do is now use the Ivory Organics. Three in one tree guard paint. This here is color brown. Um, and we can read here, it says a natural tree trunk um, branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. So this product actually has neem oil and castor oil in here as well. You got these two things. So it's got neem oil, which actually keeps insects, especially the wood boring insects. Now that there's actually damage on the bark, the skin is now compromised on this side and the termites and wood boring insects can now get into the heart of the tree. What the neem oil in this paint is gonna do is basically tell the insects to stay out while the tree actually heals itself. Um, and secondly, we've got um, castor oil. There's a lot of rodents here in Southern California. There's rats, there's mice, there's rabbits, there's um, plenty of rodents that actually can actually chew on the bark, especially in um, hungrier times, such as in the winter. They'll actually chew on the bark to get the sugars out of the plant. So we're going to coat it now. I actually pre-made this brown paint. So I'm mixing it. It's basically a brown organic powder with the neem oil and the castor oils that are added and then filled up with water. And now we're just going to apply it to the tree bark. And you can see it actually goes on watery. Um, it's not a thick paint. You're basically coating it, giving it another layer of skin. You can do this once or twice a year. Uh, after this dries on, in about 15 or 20 minutes, I'll actually do a second coat just to make sure it's really covered and coated for today. And I'm gonna go up about as high as I can go up here. I'm not getting it on the leaves. I have another foliar spray made out of the organic white three-in-one tree guard paint that I'm gonna put on it to basically coat also the leaves. Um, a lot of farmers have successfully used our products for um, as a foliar spray at the time of transplanting, even vegetables. Um, and today we're gonna use it for the tree and you can see I'm getting it all over the branches And you can see how natural looking this is being it's brown So here we go That's about it. Like I said, I'm gonna do a second coat as soon as this dries on but now it's actually coated and protected from the Sun um, So the actual bark of the tree is not getting any damage directly from the Sun throughout the day. The last thing we're gonna do Is we're gonna take this um, the spray can, which is basically one or two teaspoons of white Ivy Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint in a bottle of water. And I'm just going to spray this now on the leaves. And you can see that the leaves are now have like a coat of white sunblock on it. 
This is all organic. It's not latex white paint. It's not um, any product that has algicides or fungicides, which you can actually damage plant tissues. Um, so this here is going to help the plant reflect the sun. It's still getting plenty of light through um, to its leaves. Um, we only do this application once and maybe twice a year. Um, if there's extreme heat expected, you can actually save your leaves. The leaves are the food source for the plant, so you're going to want to make sure your leaves are healthy um, and not getting burnt in the sun because with healthy leaves, they're actually making the sugars that are going to strengthen and improve the plant, um, especially going into fruit production in the spring and uh, summer and fall. Um, so here we go. Last step is we're going to now return the stake um, to make sure that if there's a windy day, the tree's not going to topple over. So we're going to push this down. Here we go. And another tip for staking your plant, I've got my string. I'm going to cut that. But the first thing I do when actually staking a tree is I actually tie the string to the stake and not to the tree. You can see I'm tying it on as tight as I can. I've seen a lot of gardeners, they're actually tying knots onto the actual tree, which actually um, girdles the tree and, um, and actually compromises the life of the plant from that point up. So what I did is I tied it as tight as I can to the stake and I'm leaving it loose between the tie and the plant, but this will actually hold the plant in place and there's plenty of room for the plant to continue to grow um, throughout this year and the years to come. So this stake will last at least for the next two to three years in this position. If there's other large branches that need support, we'll be doing exactly the same thing. But you can see it's got the space that it needs. We cut off the tie and we're done. Thanks for watching this Ivy Organics um, presentation on planting an avocado tree using Ivy Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.